Well, hello there, YouTube. It's Friday, November 11th, 2022. And you know, it's been a little over a year since I first started this project, but don't worry, it's not gonna take you that long. Um, this past week or so, I've been sick with sinus, so that's why I didn't get an, uh, a video uploaded. Um, and uh, now, uh, as I've been editing the video, I find out, you know, it's a pretty long video, so I need to break it up a little bit. So this first part of the video is going to be installing the, the rings and clocking the rings. And then in the next video, we'll actually uh, install the connecting rods uh, to the crank, and that'll be that. So until then, you know, that's what we're going to do. Um, for, for those of you who are new to this channel or the first time you're seeing this, you know, I'm rebuilding my 1987 560 SL. Uh, this car has not been started since 2008, and we're planning on starting this live on YouTube. That's right, live on YouTube, uh, hopefully pretty soon, right? We're, we're, we're installing the piston, so we're about ready to close up the bottom end. Uh, so, you know, if you guys would like to support this project, the way that you can do that is simply by, you know, subscribing. No, I don't think I'm going to make any money. Uh, that's not it. Uh, I only want this project to be supported out there for people who are interested. That's all. It has nothing to do with monetary stuff. And believe me, I don't think you really make any money on YouTube unless you're, you know, you're doing stupid videos. <laughs> All right, so I got to get back into this. I don't want to waste any time because, like I said, this ended up being a lot longer than I thought it was. Uh, so let's get started with this one, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Before I just jump right in and start installing rings, I thought I'd grab the old rings and get a feel for it. You know, I, you, you might as well break these before you break the new ones. These Mercedes things are quite expensive. Um, these are the two different tools that, you know, most people are using. I, I tried them both, um, and this is the one that's recommended and the one I'm going with. But something that's really funny, you see what they say this is? It's a three-way air duster. <laughs> Again, you know, I already did a video on comparing this and we've already taken it all off. So that's not what really this is about. Uh, it's just to get a feel for these and to understand how they go together and the differences between the rings so you don't mix them up. Uh, you don't want to over expand. You know, the more you expand that you, you know, you're basically going to, you know, stretch this thing. When you get to these, these chrome ones and things like this, this carbon kind, you know, you can break them, so you don't. You want to be a little bit careful. I was thinking I wanted to do the ring thing, you know, just go, whoa, hey. <laughs> All right, stop fooling around, Tony. Um, but this is an interesting ring, and it comes in two pieces. So you don't just install it like this. You, you need to... Take your, your spring out, right? Now, this spring also comes apart. I don't know if you knew that. We'll talk about this later, but we're going to be clocking these rings as well. But you also need to clock this. So, you know, you put this thing together, and then this opening here, right? That opening needs to be on the opposite side of that. So it has to go like that when you install it. You don't want all these openings together. You don't want it to catch. You know, it can catch on one of these edges. I mean, there's a lot of different things. So you want to, as a matter of fact, in the brand new ones, as I pull them out, you'll see uh, Mercedes has marked the side that's supposed to be visible. All right, so we'll, we'll look closer at all that. But right now, like I said, I wanted to get a feel for it so we understand how that works. So again, you know, this is not a tutorial on how to use this tool. These things can pop off. These tools are flimsy, you know. But basically, that's what you're trying to do. You get that on there, and now you, it'll, it'll hold your, your ring. And then what we're trying to do is how far do we need to go Right? Once you get that back edge, then you can kind of probably pull that, that main edge in. 
you know, but my question is, what if I were to just take this end right here and just squeeze it right together? Well, all the way, right? There, completely together. And you can see we didn't break it. It's more than adequate. I wanted to get a feel for that. You can see, you know, make, again, make sure this thing don't pop out, catch it, then, you know, make sure she's, she's good held. And there you go. I think that that's pretty straightforward. Then we have two other rings. What if you got it mixed up? Well, there is a difference. Um, this one here is, is like a chrome, right? It's a chromoly ring. This is a carbon steel kind of a ring. Um, this also has a bigger ledge. You know, this little ledge right here, you see that ledge? If you look at the other one, see if we can compare them. But you can certainly tell the difference in material. You see how that other, that back one's got a bigger ledge on it? So that's your second ring. And your chrome ring is the one that goes on the top. All right, so we've sampled the oil ring, so we feel like, oh, I'm successful. Uh, another thing, too, the, the oil ring, this one here can go either this way or that way. There's no top or bottom. However, in the new piston, I mean, in the new set of rings, there is markings on here. So I'm going to have all the markings facing towards the top. And the reason is, is because that same marking is on the top of all of these. So let's see if we can install the second ring. Oh, another thing I did. <laughs> In my other video, as I said, when we took these things off, these, these things kept sliding off. So you'd go to go on there and you'd get some tension and then these things would slide right off. So what I did last night is I epoxied these things in there. So now they don't come out. All right, so that's a tip. <laughs> Definitely feels a heck of a lot better. Yeah, there you go. So again, I have a feeling like you can break this one. <laughs> so let's see. So we can easily get it open to fit. And then let's see. Can I bring them together? Yeah. Yeah. I can, without breaking them. So there you go. You can do it. I'm not so sure about with this one here. I, you know, I want to just get a feel for this so I know what I'm, I'm up against here. That's all. Right? I just want to know what I'm up against. So that feels good. All right. Again, our top ring. Feels eh, not necessarily any tighter, but again, it says top and all that. And we're using genuine Mercedes. So these are identical. The new ones we, we have are identical. There we go. So again, I feel that that would go pretty easily as you can see where the thing is. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this more this way so you can see my hand. Okay, now I'm gonna go all the way. There it is. And there's no need to go all the way, I'm telling you. See what's nice about that is it, I mean, it really holds, right? And you just kind of put it on there and then you just release it. All right, I feel pretty confident in there. I'll just give myself one or two dry runs and then we'll go grab a piston, so. All right, so I've grabbed the piston and I've grabbed the first set of rings and you've got A, B, and C here. And A 
is the oil ring, as you can see. B is the second ring, and C is the top ring. So, I hope that you've marked all your pistons and your caps. So I'm going to take this cap and I'm going to set it aside. And we've already, ex already played with this tool, so I think we've got a pretty good idea how to use it. And then we're not scared about breaking any rings because we've already tested that. Um, this is what I wanted to point out. You see how it's got that white paint right there? So that's what Mercedes does. And you probably can't see on here, but there's some writing. There's just probably no way I can get it on there, but there's some writing right there. And we're gonna, I'm gonna keep all of that towards the top, all the writing towards the top. You'll want to make sure that all your ring lands are really clean because behind there can be building up some carbon. Even cleaning these old rings is, is pretty much impossible, you know, so you know, even de-ringing them. And like I said, on the opposite side of that, uh, uh, the opposite side of this will be their opening where you can pull it apart. I cleaned these really well, of course, and I blew it out with an air compressor. So I'm not gonna worry about position of the ring yet. You don't even have to take it all the way out, obviously. Uh, all I'm gonna do is just get it on here, okay? We'll, we'll worry about clocking the rings later. Right now I want that in, just like that. All right, so I can see that for now, I have the actual white mark on this side. That's probably the hardest part. Let's <laughs> get this thing on there. There we go. Because you don't want the thing to fly out. All right, so I have my reference here, so I know I got to bring it at least that far, right? Want to make sure we clear this ring here. It's not easy to do. Almost got it. There we go. Ring number one. All right, so let's grab the the B, and remember, this is the one that's got the ledge on it, right? Now, they both kind of have a little bit of a ledge, and it, it's marked as yellow right here. And this does have a top and a bottom. This is the hardest part is putting this thing on here, I'm telling you, it's, it's not easy. There we go. Get it on that second ring land. It's not easy. All right, so there's number, number B, our top ring. And again, it says top. You know, I did wipe all these down with lacquer thinner and everything prior. Just because I didn't show you guys that I did it, I did. I'm gonna move that out of the way. I don't want that in my way anymore. There we go. Gosh. All right. One, two, and three. We'll worry about clocking them later. Now I got seven more of these to do, and I'm sure by the eighth one, I'll be a little bit easier. But, you know, I'm trying to show this for the camera. I can't see the back side of this over here without looking at the camera. And then, you know. Anyway, I think it's not going to be that difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and put the other seven together. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to clocking the piston rings. 
You know, the most important thing about clocking your rings is to not have your gaps line up together, right? You want to be the opposite. And what you can see is I start with my oil ring gap on the bottom and uh, complete opposite of that, I put the second ring. And then the third ring, I come back over to the oil side and do it that way. Now, this is true for all eight cylinders. So what's nice is that's the only thing we now we need to really worry about is just installing these uh, or, or you know clocking these rings all exactly the same way. And so there's my piston. And you can see I've got red, blue, and a little dab of yellow. And I even marked the rings. And you see I've already lined them up. The blue one's on the bottom, top one's uh, uh, there, and the second one is obviously just opposite of that. That's basically what I've got to do now with all three of these rings uh, and do it to all eight. So I've done it to this piston right now and I'm going to go ahead and set this piston aside and once I get these all preliminary clocked uh, we'll go over there to the engine and complete the installation. And in the next video we'll install the pistons and the connecting rods right to that crankshaft. So stay tuned for that video, it's coming right up.